The reviews are in and everyone seems to agree. Glass Onion is, well, a disappointing follow-up to Knives Out. Our question today is why? Well, Glass Onion has a lot of problems, starting with this hat. It's just dumb! But what I really want to focus on here is the bread and butter of the mystery writer's game, plot twists. What you need to write a good one and why the ones in Glass Onion don't measure up. The first thing that you need to know about plot twists is that a plot twist is really nothing more than something the audience believes that turns out to be false. And a mystery will usually deliver one of these twists right at the end, in the big confrontation scene where the killer is unmasked. So let's compare those final plot twists from our two films. In Knives Out, we've spent most of the movie believing that our protagonist, Marta, was inadvertently guilty of causing the death of her employer, Harlan Thrombey, by mixing up his medications and administering a lethal dose of morphine. In the final confrontation, we learn that the medicines were switched by the movie's villain before any of that happened, meaning that Marta injected Harlan with a harmless drug and is guilty of exactly nothing. So the belief we had was Marta is guilty and the truth is revealed to be Marta is innocent. It's a massive change, a reordering of our understanding of the story and it gives us that wonderful moment of shock and cognitive dissonance that we call a killer plot twist. Let's compare this to the big reveal at the end of Glass Onion. We've spent this entire movie watching our villain Miles Braun swan around his preposterous mansion, brag about his wealth and his vision, and exploit his supposed friends without compunction. We've also heard the horrible story of how he forced his business partner Andy out of their company through legal fraud. When we learn that he has also murdered Andy, well, there's no moment of shock. Uh, it doesn't make us say, I can't believe it, or I never saw that coming because we can believe it and we totally saw it coming. Our belief in this case has just changed from Miles is a monster to Miles is a slightly bigger monster. It's a difference of degree, but not a difference of kind. There's no belief that's truly been upended. And so if you left the theater feeling a little unsatisfied, well, this is why. You never truly got to experience surprise during the big reveal. But mysteries don't depend just on their final plot twists. Most mysteries need one or more twists in the middle to give the story a shakeup and prevent it from feeling too linear. Both movies have a couple of twists in the middle, so let's look at the most significant midpoint twist for each film. In Knives Out, that twist happens when we first learn that Marta believes she mishandled Harlan's medicine. Up to this point, we had believed that Marta was simply one of many witnesses to the last days of Harlan Thrombey. We didn't know that she believed she had played a part in his death. In Glass Onion, we learn that the Andy who arrived at the island isn't Andy at all. Instead, she's Helen, Andy's twin sister. Andy has been murdered and Helen is here to unmask her killer. So why does the Knives Out twist give us a frisson of shock and tension while the Glass Onion twist leaves us feeling a little cold? Well, it's because a plot twist has to be more than just surprising. It also has to be supported. There need to be clues in place that make this particular surprise believable. Here's how we should react to a really good plot twist. <gasps> of course. That's what it should feel like, a moment of shock followed by a moment of synthesis as our brain rushes back and picks up all those clues, integrating them into a new reality. A reality that not only surprises us, but makes perfect sense. In the case of Knives Out, we've got just one really big clue to support this plot twist, but it does the job. This clue is Marta's incredible discomfort with being questioned about Harlan's death. Her nervousness seems excessive for a mere witness to the events of the evening, but as soon as we know she thinks she's guilty, we understand it. It all makes sense. Contrast this with the glass onion twist, which has no clues, and I mean nada backing it up. Do any of Andy's friends seem to be aware that she had a twin sister? No completely out of left field. Does Helen exhibit any behaviors that seem strange to her friends that make them say things like, oh, you gave up smoking, or oh, I thought you hated classic rock. Do we even have an indication that Helen may be grieving? No, uh, we have, we have nothing. Nothing to pick up on to create that moment of synthesis, the moment where everything we've perceived is supposed to come together with what we have just learned to create a new understanding of the world. 
If you feel like this video is helping you understand plot twists and how they work, please take just a second to hit the like button. And if you did, thank you so much. I really want to reach more writers with practical tips and the likes, honestly, they help. Now, I have heard some criticism of this movie, uh, focusing on the assertion that having an identical twin waiting in the wings to take over for your victim at the midpoint is simply too convenient, too hokey, uh, too dumb. And there's some truth in that, sort of, uh, because the likelihood of any particular character having an identical twin is so low, it is hard to hold a twist like this for the midpoint when the ins and outs of your world are clearly established. It's a little easier to introduce it earlier in the plot when we're still learning who's who and what's what and we're pretty much willing to accept anything. But I'm still going to maintain that identity switching and even using identical twins for this purpose is a delightful cozy mystery trope. And that the biggest problem here isn't the choice of the twist or even the timing, it's the complete lack of clue support. Because this is what clues do for you. They take the implausible and make it plausible. When done really, really well, they even make it inevitable. If you want a super simple way to plan clues for your mystery, seriously, it's so simple. You might want to click on this video. It goes over the five types of clues you'll usually find in mysteries and it shows you how you can very easily plan them.